is teaching them to observe all things. How many things? Whatsoever things. How many things? All things. All things. Whatsoever. I have commanded you. I have commanded you in what? Lo. Lo, I'll be with you always. always with you. Even until the end of the world. The point is, my friends, in closing, Jesus said out there, from that water, Lord, save me. The Ethiopian, uh, another the Philippian jailer, uh, broadened it by saying, what must I do to be saved? He meant eternally. Right. He could not be saved even by just get, getting into a boat uh, like Peter because that wasn't the same kind of occasion. Uh, Peter uh, was a, an apostle of the Lord, of course, and but Peter would have drowned had he gone down in that water. And he knew that. So Jesus reached forth his hand. And you know what Jesus is trying to do tonight? He's reaching forth his hand for those of you who want to know what to do to be saved. Amen. This man, the Philippian jailer, had to learn what to do. And they spoke unto him the word of God. Right. And when they got the word of God, he was ready for baptism. And tonight, if you're here and you're not a Christian, you may say, well, I believe God, I believe God. I've been uh, around Christian people all my life, and I do the best I can. I try to live right, and I believe you. I believe there are some morally good people who just don't know Amen. what God wants them to do to be saved. Yes, they think they're already saved because they feel good, but don't go on your feelings. You must have a knowledge of the word of God in your heart. Right. When you have that in your heart and you obey God from the heart, God will save you and he'll keep you saved because he'll continue to pinch you of your sins if you walk in the light. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all of our unrighteousness. I wonder if there's somebody in this audience tonight who wants to be saved. And I told you what God has told me through his word to tell you. I wanted to use Peter's account to show you that you can sink and you'll keep sinking and you'll keep sinking until you're completely lost. There are some of you who perhaps Say to your friends and relatives who want to see you saved, oh, I'm going to obey one day. I need to come a few more times and a few more times. And, and, and eventually, God says, you're going to do the last time. You know, when you get up in the morning and dress, mm -hmm. you don't know who's going to have to undress you mm -hmm. that night. All right. You can die. Right. You can die. But the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all have become new. Somebody needs to, needs to come to Jesus tonight. I don't know who you are, but you know who you are. Young and old, you ought to do what the Philippian jail did. You can't say this was some ignorant man who didn't know anything. This was a man who, who had a great office in keeping these people uh, incarcerated. But this man needed to be saved. Amen. And he was humble enough to let the men who were prisoners <coughs> tell him what God said. All right. And when they did that, that man was saved. Right. Had a great church at Philippi. He had Philippians. That's the letter to the church at Philippi. Now, Jesus, you remember when he came to the coast of Caesarea, Philippi. The two Philippi, of course, in uh, the Holy Land, as they call it. We went to uh, both of them. But my point is, you have to know the word of God. Mm -hmm. And you have to believe it so strongly that you will repent of your sins, change your mind. You will confess Christ. Yes, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Yes. And then you will be buried in baptism. The water is ready. The baptism uh, will close, the baptism will close out here for you ladies. You want to cover your hair and all of that. Come on, God will help you. We won't. Men, come to Jesus. Children, if you're old enough to understand this message yourself 
and know the difference in right and wrong, you need to come to Jesus. I don't try to set an age level. Children, I don't believe in baptizing infants. Uh, because as I told you last night, infants don't have any sin. Jesus said, except you become like a little child. Humble yourself. Uh, you will never enter the kingdom of God. So somebody needs to come in here tonight. Whatever your problem may be, you need prayer. Maybe not uh, baptism, but prayer. You need something to strengthen you so you can go and tell others about it. I'm sure that Philippian jailer, when he obeyed God, went on out telling people what had happened to him on the job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On the job. It could happen to you on the job. Yes, sir. It could happen to anyone. Wherever you are, God can save you if you will just receive his word and obey it. When you come tonight, will you say yes tonight? That's what Jesus wants you to say. We can't compel you to obey the gospel. I don't even know who you are. You need to be saved. But God knows who you are. And remember, you have to go home or sleep tonight with that question on your mind. What must I do to be saved? And if you don't get that answer, ask any of us, any of us, and we'll be happy to help you or to direct you to the people who can. We ask you to come tonight. Jesus wants to save you tonight. Members of the church who want prayer, you come to. God wants you. We know it's 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 cold outside, but it's warm in here. Amen. Because God is our God. Amen. Therefore, I ask you in his name to come to Jesus. That's the other we say. Will you come? Um.